Back at Pittsburgh, John Brody, what's the game going to be? Well, I think what would expose himself more than anything 23 seconds before the end of the first half was they call a draw play when they're on the 40-yard line. They pick up six yards. They have two timeouts left, and they don't use one of them. Now, all it, all it exposes to me is that there's a lot of disorganization over on the Jets' side of the bench. I mean, this is professional football. These fans come here to watch people take advantage of the clock, and and they didn't do it. Now, this is just an indication of the way they've been playing, and they've got to stop it. That guy sure has been playing well. Terry Bradshaw, we'll be watching him shortly. Right now, let's switch back to New York to NFL 81 and Bryant Gumbel. Bryant? Offensive coordinator. He'll be coming out on the field as the Steelers are ready to kick it off to start the second half. Trout is into the ball, hits another boomer. Stone wants to go, and he'll take it out from five yards deep. Kirk Stone flies up the middle, and so do penalty markers right behind him. So the Jets will go on offense first and ten, but they'll be set back. Seeing a little wowie. Looks like Calvin Sweeney being helped off the field. And Coach Walt Michaels, again, watching his team behind. They had an unusual offense, did not score. Buffalo was just so great. I don't know if anybody could have beat him that day. I don't think the Fifth Army could have moved on the Buffalo defense. Next week, the Jets scored 30, but that was one point less than they needed for a draw, at least. And Cincinnati, and today they only have three points up on the field goal by Pat Leahy. And I think more than anything, uh, Bill you know what? Above the waist, from behind, number 35, receiving team. First down. Pittsburgh's defense is not doing anything that they didn't expect them to do. They've done the same thing for the last five or six years. They play five short zones. They put two men deep. Sometimes they play man-to-man -man on the corner. Sometimes they play zone. But in order to beat Pittsburgh, you have to get them to change their coverage a bit. Get concerned with people down the field. You have to create two uh, patterns to beat a double coverage. And if you can't be successful doing that, you can't beat Pittsburgh. And today, the Jets have not tried to do it. And that's my concern. Well, now they'll help to work from a hole. They'll be starting out at the 10-yard line. First and 10 for the Jets. Kelvin Sweeney, 85, was the man with the wobble coming off the field. And it was fouled by August Tuniak on the kick coverage. Handoff goes to Tom Newton. He cuts back, gets across the 10-yard line, out to the 13, and Gary Dunn makes the tackle for Pittsburgh. Defensively, the Steelers have across the front L.C. Greenwood, Joe Green, Gary Dunn, and John Banaszak. Dirk Winston, Jack Lambert, and Lauren Taves back the line. The rookie Washington to one corner, Mel Blunt the veteran at the other, J.T. Thomas and Donnie Shell the safeties. The Jets on offense, Joe Fields down over the ball to center with Rasmussen and Alexander the guards. Ward and Powell the tackles. Jerome Barkham the tight end. Second down and eight carry. He gets ahead for only about a yard. Lambert again feeling he's led the Steelers now in tackles for seven straight years. Big Jack. He gets out of there fast. They do everything to keep blockers off him. In the open field, he's as good a tackler as you'll find a linebacker to be. That time he got a little help before he had to jump in. Likes to angle in behind Joe Green. Kind of hide from the blockers. I would too. He makes a lot of plays that way. You're pointing out earlier, Joe Green and Lambert together. That has been some combination. Green now comes right over the ball. Todd throws downfield too high for Wesley Walker, turning in on the rookie cornerback who's covered well. They've only gone to Walker twice since Washington's been on him. And the Jets come up short again and will punt the ball. Anthony Washington must feel like he's an all-pro today. They've got Wesley Walker on him. He makes a pretty good pattern. He's the kind of fellow that can beat a bump and run by going inside or outside. Breaks down at the point of attack. The ball was thrown high because of a good linebacker drop. Chuck Ramsey, deep in his area, gets the punt away. Gets a good punt away. Spiral going back for it is Jim Smith. 36 turns the corner and the Jets are there. Good kick coverage, a 48-yard punt by Ramsey. 
a return of only two yards. And the Steelers go on offense for the first time in the second half. 13-10 to play in the third quarter when we come back to Pittsburgh. New York Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers live from Three River Stadium on NBC. Don Crickey with John Brody, Terry Bradshaw, and the Steeler offense going first and ten, their first possession of the second half. They lead 17-3. They go to the run. Frank Pollard, a hard-working back in his second year from Baylor, takes the ball straight ahead of the Jet defense. Two tackles, Salam and Lyons knocked him down. Pollard's played well, but in the end zone once. Teamed up with Franco Harris at the moment behind Terry Bradshaw. Stallworth and Lynn Swan, the wide receivers for Pittsburgh. The offensive line has played extremely well. Second down and six for the Steelers. Their 42-yard line. Pollard comes across in a slant, hits that close to the 45-yard line. He got about three. Mark Gastineau at left end made the stop for the Jets. Let go the other defensive end. Linebackers for the Jets, Buttle, Blinka, and Mel. The secondary has been changing around. They've been switching corners in and out. Donald Dykes playing the right corner right now. Jerry Holmes at the left. And Roy and Ray are the safeties. It's third down at about two now for the Steelers at their 45-yard line. Hits back. Here comes Harris. seems to have improved uh, during the intermission. <laughs> He's always had a very good burst, but look at Larry Brown out there. Number 79, about 265 pounds, leading the way. I mean, that puts a burden on those defensive backs. So Franco Harris with a productive day, seven carries and 46 yards, 20 coming in that last run. Now the Steelers moving ahead the ball at the 38-yard line of the Jets, first and 10. Russell Davis up the middle, and more strong blocking from the Steeler offensive front. Morrison and Wolfley, the guards. Larry Brown and John Cole, the tackles, and the all-pro Mike Webster, the center. Five-yard gain on that run. The ball's down to the 33-yard line of New York. They've still got Holmes out there all alone on Lynn Swan. Lynn Swan is wide to the right. Stalworth coming to the run. Here's the reverse. Oh. Stalworth has the ball. He's got blocker. Stalworth inside the 20 and down to the 15-yard line. So the Steelers go to their bag of tricks and get 20 more yards. Frustrated right now, Don. You cannot run reverses on a team that's loafing. The Jets are playing. They're pursuing as fast as they can. They're taking advantage of that pursuit. They catch somebody not staying at home, and they get a, a wide open field to run in, pick up the first down, and now it's first and ten inside the 20 on the 16-yard line. They're playing good. They are playing real good. Now they have the ball down to the 16-yard line of the Jets. First down and 10 there for Pittsburgh. Stallworth is wide left, Swan wide right, and here is Bradshaw right up the middle. He's going to get blocked by Collins. Another great block. Bradshaw bails out the five-yard line. Boy, that Pollard is just killing people out there with the blocks. Hey, Stallworth came back, picked on the wrong man that time. If you're going to help, help on those defensive backs, he picked on the linebacker. Stan Blinky isn't exactly the guy to match up with. No, but boy, that Pollard knocked another guy down, John, spread the corner right out in the field, and then Bradshaw took it right down inside the 10 down to the 6-yard line. So the Steelers have second down and less than a yard coming up. They lead this game 17-3. the middle out of the blocks quickly and he's down inside the five to the three yard line 
Joe Klecko and Stan Blinkers made the stop for the Jets. But the Steelers drive on. Four more downs now, and they're inside the five-yard line of the Jets with 10.38 to play in the third quarter. Lynn Swine now goes out, and Randy Grossman comes in. Double tight end. Grossman isn't big, but he's a good blocker. They line him up as a wing. He's coming out to the right as a wing. A lot of times you'll see him come in motion back to the left side. And he'll leave the block. He's into the end zone down close. This time they run off tackle. Pollard takes the ball down to the three-yard line. Abdul Salam throws him back. Virtually no gain on the play. It'll be second and goal for the Steelers. One of the toughest calls in football. Third down and... And three inside the five-yard line. Almost have to throw the ball. And there isn't much room to complete it. This is second, however. Not quite as tough a play. Yeah, let's see what they do now. Bradshaw has used all the plays today. Most of them have gone for yardage. Second down and goal for the Steelers. There's Grossman in motion. They come back behind him. Now Franco cuts straight ahead and gets down to the one. Third down and goal for Pittsburgh inside the New York Jet one-yard line. And Walt Michaels and his New York Jets down again. Last week they had a 17-3 lead. The margin they trail by at the moment over Cincinnati. Looked like they had the game locked late in the fourth quarter. Bengals coming back to win 31 to 30. Now the Steelers threatening to almost put the lid on here if they can take it in. Jets will have to come out throwing successfully to get back in it. Bradshaw calls his own number. Number 12 goes into the end zone and the Steelers are on the board again. 23 to 3. yards in 10 plays and that's just what they're doing they just reach into their hat and pull out a play and it seems to be effective you can see the the last 10 days of work has had quite an effect the Steelers are still a class football team they're showing it today they surely are now Trout will try the point after and he drills it up and good so with 8.39 left to play in the third quarter, the Pittsburgh Steelers have opened up a 24-3 lead. We'll be back at Three Rivers Stadium with the Steelers' kickoff after this. Back at Pittsburgh, the Steelers have been in the end zone again, and now they lead 24-3. Those of you watching in the New England area, very shortly, we'll be switching you down to Houston to watch the Dolphins and the Houston Oilers. The viewers in New York and the Pittsburgh area will continue to see the entirety of this game as the Jets bring it back. Kenny Lewis returns the kickoff out to the New York Jet 30-yard line. Now Richard Todd and the Jet offense comes back out. See if the Jets are a dispirited team at this point. Down 24-3. to They need a big play so badly with 8.30 to go in the third quarter. They're very dispirited offensively, Don, and uh, it's... It's, it's visible if you're sitting at 50 rows up. They need a couple of people to take over and run the show right now. Wesley Walker, wide right. Anthony over the middle of all is complete. This is Freeman McNeil. And McNeil, breaking a tackle, gets all the way out to the 45-yard line. A gain of 15 yards and a New York Jet first down. We haven't seen a lot of McNeil since early in the game when he ran that 30-yarder from scrimmage. And he took a little five-yard pass then. It was uh, nothing but a layoff. Turned it into a first down. Case is closing for the Jets. They've got to put some points on the board. Todd, a deep drop on first down, throws over the middle, and the ball is intercepted by Pittsburgh's J.T. Thomas. He is promptly dropped by Bobby Jones, but the Steelers have the ball back. And right now, the Jets are in disarray, trailing 24-3. 
Don, they're not executing well. This time he's got a chance. Donnie Shell reads the play before it is even run. Gaffney gets his hands on the ball, but it really wasn't an open execution anyway. And uh, an interception results. In a moment, we'll be switching part of our audience to the Houston-Miami game. So with 7.39 left to play here at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, the score is the Steelers 24, the Jets 3. First and 10, Steelers with the ball. Bradshaw in the flat. Stallworth turning out on the corner was open by five yards. Dykes playing way off him. Doesn't want to give him the long one, so he took one for 11. Don't blame him. Nope. It was there. First down yardage on the throw, and the, the Steelers move it upfield. The game isn't too complicated, Don. When you have a fellow of stalwart's ability, there's no cornerback that can cover you on an out or a comeback and also cover you all the way down the field on a post or a corner. And that's all they do. They find out where the cornerback's playing them. They communicate the huddle, and, they, and Bradshaw takes what's given. Bradshaw, learning to dump it off again. Flings it in the flat. Franco loses the ball. Takes a look at Buttle, who is cruising in. Free ball at Buttle. Almost got his hands on. So the clock is stopped now with 7.29 left to play in the third quarter. Steelers open up a 7-0 first quarter lead. Let 17-0 in the second quarter. 17-3 at halftime. It's now 24-3 Pittsburgh. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. WJAC-TV, Johnstown. Lynn Swan, wide to the right. John Stallworth on the left bank. Don Quickie and John Brody, second down and 10 for the Steelers at Pittsburgh. Leading 24 to 3, they go to Frank O'Harris. He rips it off, up the middle. Nine-yard gain down to the Jet 45. When you throw the ball as effectively as they do, the linebackers have got to start checking the, their, their drops. When they do, you can run trap plays galore. Linebackers are the ones who stop trap plays. There weren't any in the way on that trip. Excellent block by the second-year guard from Syracuse, Craig Wolfley. As he took the middle linebacker Blinker right out of the play. Third down and one for the Steelers, Jet 45-yard line. and then he shoots into it, gets the first down. How many times have you seen that play? He's been making it work for 10 years. Franco Harris, the third leading rusher all time and the greatest playoff rusher in the history of pro football. And I think his secret, Don, is we look at Lou Michaels and he can't be, he has to be dejected. His whole club is and they're playing it very dispiritedly at, at this time, particularly on offense. Their defense is hanging in there but the Steelers are executing so well, it does them very little good. And it's not a whole lot when everything's going right on the Steeler offense. Now they go to the blitz. There's a throw in the flat. Penalty marker's down. It's going to go against Jerry Holmes of the Jets. Or is it going against Swan? I don't know who it's going to be. Here. Penalty marker was thrown way downfield. We'll see who is guilty of the bump. I get the feeling it was on Swan. I think he pushed off. He did. Looked right there. He pushes off. That's good coverage. When you can get an offensive receiver to be concerned with you when you're playing him one-on-one, -on -one, as Holmes has Swan all day, you, you're doing your job. And then some. <laughs> but for the most part, the Steeler passing game's been... There is no flag. Oh. What would have been offensive interference is not because the ball could not have been caught by anybody in any case. <laughs> well, that's true. It was a, a rather suspect throw. That's a sign of apathy right there. When things are going against you, you only laugh if it's an overloading amount. Back in New York, John, as you know, uh, Walt Michaels took a unbelievable beating in certain areas of the press. Could be another rough week, Coach Michaels. Second down and 10 now for the Steelers at the 38-yard line of the New York Jets. Going out to Frank. Bradshaw. Those guys are 
so well coordinated when Bradshaw does start running loose that uh, that time he got a, a good block from Franco who helped him pick up an extra three or four yards. There's a big difference between second or third and two. Third and about a half. He said before the game, we're going to come out and we're going to open it up. I think we're going to score a lot of points. So far, they've put 24 up. And they've, read, they've made their reverses work, they've made their wide plays work, and they've done so because the corners have put all their attention on the wide receivers, have not been in any sort of force position. So anytime they get outside, they can go. It's now third down and less than a yard for the Steelers. 30-yard line of the Jets. They've been getting a lot of steps straight ahead. Franco does it again. Boy, is he quick. He is so big. They list him at 6'2", 225, but you stand next to him, he seems a lot bigger than that. What a back. Now his 10th year out of Penn State. He's got 67 yards today, and you see Bradshaw's numbers. And down for minus 145 passes. He's got a lot more than that. He's over 200 yards for the day. Now Bradshaw sets the Steeler offense. 25-yard line, first down and 10. Whoops, lost the ball. Got it back, but there's a loss to the 36-yard line. Three guys running deep, including Benny Cunningham over the middle. Yeah, that happens a lot, though, when you get a safety blitz and the man comes clean after your quarterback. You're going to have some receivers running free, but the quarterback <laughs> has to get the ball going forward. He's very lucky it bounced back to him. Sid Thornton's now in the game. Second down and 20, coming up for the Steelers, 35-yard line of the New York Jets. 4.49 to play in the third quarter. 11 men on the line of scrimmage again. They're coming. Go to a draw. Filled nicely. There's a lot of room to go, but Lance Mel made the play. When you've got a safety blitz, Don, all of those fellas have a lane, and there aren't many holes. The unbeaten Falcons of Atlanta opening up a big lead over San Francisco. Detroit now ahead of Minnesota. 23-17 in the third quarter. St. Louis and Washington, high-scoring game in the third quarter at Bush Stadium. Danny Cunningham is out now. Three wide receivers are in the game for Pittsburgh. Third down, 25. Here's a throw, and Stallworth is open. Once again, the Steelers go to the big play on long yardage third down. You give a, a, a guy like John Stahl with a chance to run in the middle of the field where he can break the, either the inside or the outside. You give your quarterback time to throw. They can pick up 26 to 7 yards. Very well-designed play. I'm telling you, he's having a day. Bradshaw and Stallworth, this looks like one of the Super Bowl days. And it's a perfect example of a man beating two defenders. They're double teamed. Where's the Unnecessary roughness, number 29, defense, first down, goal to go. Johnny Lynn called for unnecessary roughness, and so the ball is set closer to the jet goal. Down to the seven-yard line. First in the goal there for the Pittsburgh Steelers. 3.53 to play third quarter, and the Steelers in the lead, 24-3. Stallworth takes it off the two-yard line, goes into the end zone. Going to be down to the one-yard line. That's where they spot him where he was caught and thrown back. And Beautiful. it's also a correct call. He had him in his grasp, let go, and that's when Stallworth got away. But it's a very alert play by Bradshaw, a guy who sees everything covered to the right side, comes back to a receiver he knows he knows might be open. Stallworth had gone all the way in the end zone, came right back toward the quarterback, and gave him an opportunity for a couple-yard game. John Stallworth, another product of the, some of those masterful F Pittsburgh drafts. He came out as a fourth-round choice out of Alabama AM and N eight years ago. Having a career day. He has eight receptions for the day. Now it's second down and goal from inside the two. Pollard goes over the goal line for a second time, and the Steelers open up a 30-3 to lead.
getting rough for the Jets. If this was a fight, they'd stop it. 30 to 3 is the score. Pittsburgh in the lead. David Trout puts up another one, and the Steelers extend their lead now to 31 to 3. So, we'll be back to Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. The Steelers on the road to win number one. That's how we'll break down in the AFC Central Division. Cincinnati 2-0, Houston 2-0 at the moment, and the Steelers heading for victory number one. 31 to 3 lead. Here's the kickoff. Kirk Stone brings it out of the end zone for the Jets. He's out to the 20, out to the 25. That is the deal for the Jets as they go on offense once again. The New York Jets hoping to get off the schneid today and get something going. And they've had one of their worst days of this season, and there have been some long ones. Cut out defeated Buffalo. Big lead, and then the subsequent loss late in the game to Cincinnati last week. And now, Coach Walt Michaels and his Jets down 31 to three in the third quarter against a Pittsburgh team that had a bad start this year, but looks like the Steelers we've known through the 70s when they became the premier team in professional football. Steeler defense wants more of it. They're digging right in, going after Todd on a rollout. But your Todd takes a look, throws back, incomplete. It'll be second down and ten. So second down coming up, let's switch back to New York and Bryant Gamble. Bryant? Well, down, down in the dome, the Oilers Dolphins ball game still very much up for grabs, and so is this Don Strzok pass. Hits Doriel Harris, winds up in the arms of Ted Washington, and the Oilers are on the move, but still trailing the ball game in the third period, 9-7. Done? All right. Lots of things happening down in the Astrodome. And what's been happening here at Three Rivers Stadium has been the Pittsburgh Steeler offense and a defense that shut down the Jets and held them with three points through almost three quarters of play. Richard Todd hands off. Tom Newton tries to run, but he finds 270-pound Joe Green there to throw him down at the 23-yard line. Third down coming up for the Jets. Lost yardage on the play. It'll be third down and 13. and 12 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The Jets still looking to get something going. Zach Valentine in the game as a linebacker for the Steelers. Todd with third and 13. JT Thomas fakes the blitz and drops back in zone coverage. Here's the throw. Wesley Walker ran an in pattern. The ball came out incomplete. And the Jets will have to punt. Don, this game's gone a little more than out of control. Uh, the patterns are not being run sharply. The quarterback seems totally confused and the whole offensive line who is trying to do their job finds it almost impossible under these conditions uh, it almost looks like the dam has broken yeah this jets are in flames right now chuck ramsey on the field to punt again for the new york jets jim smith and larry anderson back punts and snaps them in on a one half and here's an end over end kick down field Takes a jet hop down to the 30-yard line, and there the Steelers go back on offense. First and 10 with 1.45 left to play in the third quarter. 47-yard punt. Little Solis on the jet sideline right now. Don Cricky with John Brody back at Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. As you mentioned, John, the dam is broken for the New York Jets. It has, and it leads to all the speculation that's been going on around New York over the past couple weeks, and we're going to have to get into some of it throughout the next quarter and a half of play. The Steelers are just playing so well, but it's not all that. 1.45 to play in the third quarter. Bradshaw takes a look long. There's the man out there, but it's overthrown. Jim Smith turned back. Let's check out the rest of the National Football League. Back to New York, the NFL E1, and Brian Gumbel. Okay, Don, we're keeping an eye on that battle down in the Astrodome, and Houston has just gone back out in front of the Miami Dolphins on a Tony Free field goal from 40 yards in the third period. Oilers 10, Dolphins 9. Don? Good one in the Astrodome. Good one for the Steelers at Three Rivers Stadium. Walt Michaels, uh, there's not a thing he can do at this point. I mean, you come in with a game plan and it's not been executed. Whatever the problems are, and there are many, the Jets are in disarray at the moment, trailing 31 to 3. Sometimes for the Jets, Buttle makes the tackle. He's still hitting hard. Gain of only 
yard. Well, I think their defensive players are all hitting hard. I don't I don't think it's a lack of effort out there. I think it's a lack of organization and feeling like they're in it. I think a lot of them are lost right now. And uh, you take a look at, at at where you point the finger, and, and it's, it's, it's a crummy thing to start pointing a lot of fingers. But there are areas that are responsible. And if, if your team's being beaten 31 to 3, when other people think you have talent to be able to compete with that group, and it happens two or three times out of three, uh, you have to take a look at the, at the responsible areas. Bradshaw throws over the middle, intercepted and lost. Oh man, Kenny Troy might have taken it the distance. Had his hands on the ball, but could not hold on. So it goes as an incomplete pass, and Colt puts out for one of the rare punts the Steelers have put in the air this afternoon. Steelers turned the ball over. You'll remember their first drive. They took it down the field and then fumbled the ball in a run and they just got it back when the Steelers were really moving. And it looked like shades of the opening day against Kansas City when they turned the ball over seven times. What was later described by Chuck Noll, their coach, as a team effort. Since then, the Steelers have not turned it over once since that first drive. Look at this. When it rains, it pours. Colquitt turns the corner. He's going to be close to a first down. I don't think he got there, though. Not quite. could be on the highlight reel. <laughs> he did a pretty good job after he was going out of bounds. He saw he got a block, tried to stay in bounds, and uh, almost picked it up. If you look at Walt Michaels across the way, he played, of course, as did Chuck Noll. They were teammates together on two National Football League championship teams with the Cleveland Browns. You asked Joe Namath or any of the Jets who played on the 1968 team that in January of 1969 won the Super Bowl three. they'll tell you there wasn't anybody we've Eubank, Joe Namath, any member of that organization who meant more to the win in the winning season than Walt Michaels, who was defensive coordinator. Now, as a head coach with the Jets in his fifth year, the product has not been there. It looked like it was a couple of years ago when they went eight and eight, two consecutive eight and eight years. The winning percentage into the fifth year now is below 33%. And today, it has been an awesome show by the Steelers, compounded by, as you pointed out, John Brody, some lack of preparation on the part of the Jets. Well, I'm saying lack of preparation, and I'm talking about structure, not on individual uh, people's part. Uh, when, you play, when you play a team like Pittsburgh, you know you have to get your receivers down the field. Try to run the ball and do as Tom Newton takes it inside the 30 yard line and down close to the 29. And that is the gun ending the third quarter. At the end of the third quarter, the score is the Pittsburgh Steelers 31. The New York Jets 3 will be right back after these messages from your local station. Thank you, Brian. Third down and less than a yard for the New York Jets. One of their few penetrations of the Pittsburgh end of the field short of the Pittsburgh 30. Todd calls his own number and gets a first down. Manizak got him. Opening play of the fourth quarter here at Three River Stadium. We just saw a picture of Walt Michaels and you know I guess uh, if you've played this game and you've been involved with coaching staffs and structures throughout the years what really rips a, guy, a guy's guts out and also a team's is when you see a guy that's been on your side he's been in the middle of creating something that you really feel big about and you sit you sit back and you watch people week after week tear you apart now there's no doubt about the fact that new york is as critical an area to coach a football team as as any in the world and right now you can see on his face that he is lost as to how do we get this thing together i'm watching this thing go down the tube and if he had any answers he'd be employing them right now and that's what that's the part that really makes you sick the throw goes to newton the 23-yard line at breakfast with Walt Michaels this morning. He said, you look at the way we practice, he said, we practice as well as any team I've been associated with, but come game day, it's just not there. And that's what you're talking about. That's what I'm, I was referring to when I'm talking about structure. Look, they know when they go into the ball game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're going to get double coverage on their outsides. They've got to find a way to beat it. They've got to get three or four wide receivers in the game running down the field. They've got to throw it on first down to start off the ball game and take something to the Steelers. They didn't do that. Now, Walt Michaels doesn't coach that area, but he certainly is responsible for it. So, uh, there's a good chance that... Uh, Aren't getting any better. 
there's really no focal point to the team. There's no one key player like when they did win. And the Jets, it should be pointed out, long before Michaels came in as coach, have not had a winning season since 1969. It's a long time. They were It was their last playoff year and their last winning season. They don't have a focal point, a take charge person. Number 72 offense. Got repeat, bored. second down. Second down. Namath was the key guy when he was there. They knew when they got him the ball, something big could happen in a hurry. Second down and eight now for the Jets. Todd, big rush, gets it away. Tip, intercepted, Jack Lambert. So again, the Steelers defense comes up with a big play. L.C. Greenwood puts the rush on Todd, and Jack Lambert goes up in the air, tips the ball, and comes down with it. That's what you call an exposure of, an expression of total frustration. He thinks he's got his man. Here we've got a completion. Now Jack Lambert sticks one paw up, pulls the ball down, makes a great interception. They've got the ball back. 13.50 to play, and Pittsburgh will be back after this. Fourth quarter here at Pittsburgh, 13.50 to play in the game. Gary Bradshaw, one of his great days, he's only had about 1,000 of your three rivers. He came out pitching and hit the Steelers started to roll early. Now Cliff Stout's in the game at quarterback. Look at this. It's a trick play. Great fake into the line of scrimmage. And Sidney Thornton ends up with the ball and ends up 15 yards downfield. And the problem is, if you're a Jet, you're sitting there and they're throwing in what they consider to be the subs, except Sidney Thornton's trying to get back his starting job. You know, four fumbles in one ball game put him on the bench. And uh, when you have the people of, of the Steelers' depth, you can replace a Sidney Thornton for a couple of ball games. Let him come up to the level you know he's got to play. I guess all of us are gifted down with 20-20 hindsight. It's easy to second guess in the booth. But the Jets are assessed as a team having a lot of personnel talent by other clubs around the NFL. Is there anything they can do at this point in the season to turn it around? Well, you see Rose Davis picking up his eight yards, and it's pretty easy at this point in the game, but I guess the obvious speculation is what happens if they do change coaches, all right? And we, we've heard all, we know about all these coaches in the wings, the Scrams, the, the uh, George Allens, the John Ralstons who are, who've been trying to get back in the game. I really think that right there on the staff, they have some knowledge of those who, who know and understand the personnel of that team. And uh, if anything is done, I would like, I, I hope that they stay within the, the organization because you can't change much after three games are gone in the season. Second down and two, they get about a yard. The principal owner of the Jets is an extraordinarily successful businessman, Leon Hess, whose business acumen he carries over the football team. And he's of the thinking you don't make precipitous changes, whether it's in a business organization like his huge companies or the football team which he owns. But you have to wonder if he's not now reviewing the status of the New York Jets and if a change should be made. Don't worry, they've been reviewing it. Uh, I'm, I haven't talked to anybody about it, but it's easy. All you have to do is read the reactions that people make. Pollard turns the corner, third down and two, and Pollard breaks through the Jets defense, takes the ball inside the 35-yard line and down to the 33. An 18-yard gain on the play. And at the outset of this day, of course, we talked about the Pittsburgh Steelers. The speculation here in Pittsburgh, this was an aging team. It's the kind of team you expect to see out of, you know, every Sunday when you're in the black and gold. And uh, they are far from out of it. They're two games back against Houston, but Cleveland hasn't been playing any better than they have. And now the Steelers are just ripping through the Jet defense. Splitting it wide open. This carry, good for a gain of 20 yards by Russell Davis. Another big power back, 230-pound back balls to play with when it gets like this and you're calling the signals because everybody in the backfield wants a piece of it. And we were mentioning earlier that 
I had, I had I thought that this was going to be Pittsburgh's real big shot. They've got six or seven 13-year veterans, 12-year veterans, guys that have, have been an integral part of their ball club. They've got some young players that can really play, and I expect them to win the division. And having seen them today, I have no reason to change my viewpoint. Russell Davis takes it inside. Interesting division the way it started out. The Cleveland Browns were no better off in the day's outset than the Pittsburgh Steelers, the team that won the division last year. They were 0-2 and, and are currently leading the Cincinnati Bengals at Cincinnati. So it's going to be tight after today. Bengals should be 2-1 and one if Cleveland holds up. Cleveland and Pittsburgh will be 1-2. and two. Houston right now in an airtight game with the Miami Dolphins. If they pull out, could go to 3-0. Two-game lead on Pittsburgh, but Houston has some problems. Uh, Stabler, by his own admission, is not back in peak form. It's going to take him a while. And most importantly, the best player on the Houston team, the best player in pro football, Earl Campbell, is playing with a chronically troubled shoulder. He's got problems. He's playing him, but he's hurt. Here's a throw to Lynn Swan in the end zone. That ball looked like it was thrown behind him, Don, but in actuality, he was trying to sucker the cornerback into a position to make one last leap at the end toward the ball, and it was by design, just missed. And, John, before uh, people speculate early in the season where it's going to go, we see Terry Bradshaw release. You must also consider the developments last year. Most of the playoff teams, believe it or not, got off to bad starts. The Browns lost three of their first five. The Raiders did. Uh, I think Atlanta was 3-3 three and three after six games last year. The Rams were 0-3. Oh That's right. It's a long season. Do you keep your top people healthy? The top people know it's a long season and they start playing. Russell Davis. Russell Davis takes it inside the five and down to the one yard line. How sweet it is. What a game like this does, Don, for Pittsburgh is it gets their confidence back. Now they go on with business as usual. They're not standing around second guessing looking for what's wrong. On the other side of the coin, the Jets have to be going into uh, a real questioning situation. Well, we talked about what management of the Jets is considering right now, John, and they really, Jim Kensel's mentioned publicly during the week, have always gone with this philosophy since Kensel went as president under this new regime that the Dallas Cowboys, without making changes, ultimately became a big winner. Rolling out, clips down. For the end zone, Jets are doing some popping down by that goal line. It's tough to get in. You'll remember Bradshaw on the same play earlier. A hard shot to the head, but did get a first down that subsequently was turned into a touchdown when they switched ends of the field at the end of the first quarter. You know, it's true. You won't believe this. You don't want to make excuses because the Jets are doing very, very poorly, but Tom Landry's record was about the same as Walt Michaels through five years at this point. Yeah, I buy that. I understand that, and I... I just know right now that there's an awful lot of heat, and I think that if if the management felt the same way about about Walt Michaels as uh, as Dallas has did about Tom Landry, they'd have said so. today and he surely did as the Steelers have opened up a 38 to 3 lead with 824 left to play in the game and he's been as he's been doing all afternoon David Trout's ready to kick it off for Pittsburgh and if you if you take a look at Chuck Noll he's not tough to read he's very solemn when they're winning he's got them back on the track that he expects them to be on when he gets out and out is when uh, they're not ahead on the scoreboard Kenny Lewis runs it back in the Jets going offense 
Chuck Knoll has directed this Steeler franchise, as we all know, to four Super Bowl championships, but he's never worn a Super Bowl ring yet. It's not his style, Don. You know, uh, he also was given many opportunities to do commercials around the Pittsburgh area. His viewpoint, hey, give them to the players. And I think as a result, he's become much closer with the players. Guys like Mel Blunt, who you see there, and uh, Joe Green, and, and how many can we mention? Jack Lambert. But he's a football coach, out and out, and that's all he does. He's a technician out there, and uh, that's the best quality of a good one, in my opinion. Raymond McNeil runs the ball. We'll see if the Steelers can keep it going next Sunday. They'll be back at Prairie River Stadium to go against the New England Patriots. Then they head to New Orleans. Then their longtime arch rivals from the AFC Central, the Cleveland Browns, come down the Ohio Pike to Pittsburgh. And that's always a good one. Then they go to Cincinnati, start playing in the division. Next week, the New York Jets. Well, they'll be going back to Shea Stadium to play the Houston Oilers. Then they go to Miami, but it's no day in the beach when you have to play the Dolphins down there this year. They're tough. Well, how about Houston? There are no tickets in Pittsburgh. The Steelers with their 75th consecutive home game. Wow. The only problem with Three River Stadium that isn't twice as big. Pat Ryan, the game quarterback in the Jets, throws over the middle. Freeman McNeil has the ball, loses a bypad, or loses a shoe. shoe. get reshot. He got 17 yards on the play. He's not a bad guy to get the ball, Joe. No, and I think they're going, to, they're going to realize that more and more and more. He's the sort of back that when you do get him on a linebacker and get him the ball, he's going to pick up more than a first down for you if you can find a way to keep his shoe on. And also, as a running back, he can be phenomenal. Make Bob Ledbetter, the man who coaches the Jets runners. 7.28 to play in the game. Pat Ryan, a quarterback for the Jets, going back to the run. They're getting some room here. Up the middle goes Kenny Lewis. Across the 45-yard line and a first down carry. He got to the 46. Steelers front line defense telling him it was Jack Lambert who nailed him. Second down and seven coming up for the Jets. They've yet to put a touchdown up today. Shut out in their first game at Buffalo, held at three points this day at Pittsburgh. This is an encouraging day for the Steeler defense also because they gave up more points in the first two weeks than any team in the league. They shut down the Jets today. The Steelers gave up 67 points in those opening losses. Mike Augustiniak. Free agent runner from Purdue catches the ball for a 10-yard game. And it should be pointed out that the ball was very well thrown and thrown at just the right time. Augustiniak made a good break about six, seven yards down the field. These are the things that coaches look for, that people notice when the game's out of control. This is how you keep your job if you're a rookie or get one, by playing very well, keeping your head about you and doing all you can do to help the cause. two-yard line. He got a 12-yard gain. First down, Jets. A couple of guys mixing it up. Panasak and Ward have a fight every time they play. That wasn't. That was another guy. That was Coors. Yeah, Bill Coors fighting. Well, you can see Valentine climbing on for the ride, but Jets moving now, running the ball. 6.05 to play in the game, clock running. Steelers in the lead, 38-3. to three. They let it to half, 17-3. Put up 21, unanswered point two in the second half. Pat Ryan throws it. Raymond McNeil started to run before he got it. Just as well, perhaps, because Lambert was sweeping in like a big shot. He was sweeping, he was sweeping in, but he was the only guy sweeping. Uh, it looked to me like Ryan made a pretty nifty little play. Got a big round of applause here. As they announced the Don Strock touchdown pass in Houston. Miami Dolphins 16-10 over Houston. They know who they have to catch. <laughs> 
This division is going to be real close after three weeks of play. Don, in that game in Houston, the Oilers are testing that Miami defense, trailing by six. They've got a march underway. Stabler into the arms of Mike Renfro. It's still 16-10. We'll have a final on this one before we step aside for the day. Don? The Snake trying to get the Oilers back up. They'd go 3-0 on the day if they can get back and win over Miami. Dolphins with a lot of home games coming up, though. They always do get them late in the season. Yeah, pretty good play by Gaffney. Just trying to keep both feet in bounds. concerned with the standings at this point because it looks as if if things stay the way they are everybody will be within one game of each other in the central division of the AFC and uh, with 13 games to go you just go play the best you can see how it comes out John you know they talk about when you do change coaches you go back to square one to start all over again and you had an extraordinarily long playing career and very successful one in San Francisco 17 seasons and one of the rare players to go that long you saw a lot of coaching changes over the years there and in other cities. What is your philosophy on, on changing coaches and going back to square one? I don't think it's a good idea at this time of the year necessarily to change a coach. Uh, if personal foul, roughing the passer, number 67 defense, first down. Somebody is to be held responsible for what's going on with the Jets right now, that's for sure. Cincinnati, the Browns have scored again. Mike Pruitt doing the honors from 11 yards out, and the Browns suddenly are out in front of the fourth period by a score of 20 to 10. It appears they will go one and two after three weeks. Don Pritchie? All right, Brian, Jets trying to get in the end zone for the first time today, and they might do it here. Open is Freeman McNeil. Touchdown, Jets. Very well thrown ball by Ryan. He's coming in under, situ under a situation where everybody's laying back, playing off, and it's a good operating situation for a quarterback who hasn't had a lot of playing time, but it does expose a few things. Cle uh, McNeil uh, ran an excellent pattern. He threw the ball at the proper time, and they put six points on the board. You were talking to me about yeah. coaching viewpoints, and should you change in the middle of the season? Obviously, it puts a real burden on everybody in the organization, and particularly the players. Uh, that's why they have training camps, so everyone can get accustomed to one another. And if there is anything done, I'm sure they'll stay within the ranks of the staff. Pat Leahy, extra point up on the way in good, and the Jets are on the board for their first touchdown of this day. The Jets now trail 38-10 with 5.26 left to play with Pat Ryan is through for the score. With John Brody, this is Don Quickie back at Three Rivers Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. City of Champions in the 1970s. The kick goes high and short. The ball is fielded. Coming up field now, the ball from Pittsburgh Steelers is Johnny Dirt, and he can run. Working his way across the 30, and it might get somebody on a face mask. Johnny Dirt. <laughs> Happy to have a shot at it. And then here's a free agent from Canada. Hey, they've got so many guys. Did you know Sam Davis is still on the injured reserve? I mean, there was a guy that was the heart and soul of the offensive line for about 10 years, Don, and he's still capable of playing. 
Now this is a this is the fifth offensive receiver. Primarily he's used for kickoff returns, punt return. Face mask. We see the face Five mask. Five yards on Lee on the tackler. First down. First and ten. Washington smiling. He's had a pretty, pretty enjoyable first day. Done well. He's not bad. Third cornerback the Steelers used in the left side, the rookie free agent Anthony Washington. Shut out Wesley Walker when he went against him. And whoops. Intercepted one. Marty Lyons gets a hold of the ball carrier in a broken play, and the Steelers will go from a hole. They'll be at second down about 13. Right now, they're interested in the clock winding down, and it is. It's down to five minutes to play in the game. 38 to 10, the score. The Steelers getting set for New England next Sunday here at Three Rivers. Hmm. Second down. <laughs> <laughs> That's our producer, Kenny Edmondson, having a little fun. Kenneth Roy Edmondson. Andy Rosenberg, our director, as we come to you from Three Rivers Stadium. The middle, nothing there, Jet shut it down. In the 60s, the most famous address in football, Lambeau Field, Lombardi Drive, Green Bay, Wisconsin. But then when the four world championship banners were raised here at Three Rivers, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania became the most famous address in pro football. Final score in from Atlanta. Falcons win again, 3-0 on the year, beat San Francisco 34-17. That's one of the teams that has it all, Don. At the offense, defense, special teams, coaching staff, general manager. Eddie LeBaron's put a, an awful good group together in the last four years. He is. Stout throws. Ball is caught. <laughs> Lynn Swan weaving on the far side. Goes out of bounds across midfield. A 16-yard gain on the play and a first down for Pittsburgh. Cliff Stout doesn't get an awful lot of action, Don, but... When he does, he seems to play very well. I still remember the game he played against uh, Cleveland coming off a very, a very important game. They ended up losing, but they scored 35 points. It's just feel that you either have or you don't have. You can see he had an offensive back in his way. He pushed him out of the way. Still was able to throw the ball out to Swan. That's one of the few Lins caught today. No receiver ever had a day in a Super Bowl like Lynn Swan did in Super Bowl 10. Four catches against the Cowboys for 161 yards. On a first down carry, Russell Davis takes it ahead to the 46-yard line of the Jets. Greg Buttle made the knockdown for New York. Cincinnati easing closer now, John, in the fourth quarter. Pete Johnson just ran in from a yard out. Cleveland's lead, only three points with 1.57 to play. Cincinnati's won three games or two games this season come from behind. They're opening with Seattle last week against the Jets. Trying hard to do it against the Cleveland Browns. Russell Davis up the middle, breaking tackles. Russell Davis is finally caught and knocked down by Daryl Ray at the 22-yard line. 23-yard gain on the play. some good numbers today. That's why I say they're all asking for it. It's improved the average time. It's the kind of play Gastineau would have had early in the ball game, but when you're down 38 to 10, there's just something about your energy level. Russell's is quite high today. 93 yards on just the 12 carries, as you see, and he's been in the end zone. First touchdown of the day was scored by Davis. Two minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the game. Brody heads down to the field for post-game interviews. Plans to be talking with Jim Kempsey, the president of the New York Jets. Ten-yard gain on another run, and the Steelers take the ball right at the Jets. And the game clock winds down to 2.15 to play. While we have a moment, back to New York, NFL 81. Bryant? Okay, Don Critchy, thank you very much. Bengals still trying to come from behind against the Browns. Watch this one. Kenny Anderson lost one up for Isaac Curtis. Hanford Dixon on the coverage, and yes, that is pass interference. It is first and goal for one. Pete Johnson goes over the left side. It's 2017. There's still some time left. Don? Right. the worst defeat the Jets have ever had was a 53-3 loss to Dallas. Hopefully that won't be approached today. Pittsburgh, though, is having the big day and looking for more. We'll be back. Back at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's 38 to 10. Pittsburgh Steelers in the lead. Two minutes to play in the game. Steelers have the ball inside the New York Jet 15-yard line. Second down and two. Up the middle goes 
Tiffany Thornton, he's down to the five-yard line. A lot of questions were answered for Steeler fans, for the Steeler players, and certainly for Coach Chuck Knoll today. All that's been written in the off time since the Miami loss about Joe Green being in his 13th year. L.C. Greenwood, 13th year. John Cole, 13th year. Mel Blunt and Bradshaw in their 12th year. Harrison is 10th year. Jack Hamm will come back in a week or so as in his 11th year. Were well, the Steelers too old to come back and win? Apparently not, because they were a powerhouse football team for four quarters today. In this game, when the Jets were fired and given everything they had, not that they're not now, but they know they're beaten. The Steelers went right through them. Pittsburgh story has been a great, great part of the city's history here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The elevator rapper coming up today. People on the elevator, members of the press were talking. Everybody's been talking about the Steelers on the way down. This guy turned around and said, he said, well, no matter if they're on the way down or not, in a million years, we could never thank them for what they brought to the city. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Omeyer. The coordinating producer of football is Ted Davidson. The cast of today's game has been produced by Kenneth Edmondson, directed by Andy Rosenberg, technical director Bill Toby, associate director John Filippelli. Steelers go in the end zone again, or do they? No hands up yet, other than by Pittsburgh players. Ray Penny thinks they're in. He's been signaling a touchdown since the play went dead. But it's at the goal line. Thanks today to our spotters, Jim McGinley and Tim Fogarty, our statistician, George Jordan, for their usual excellent work here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A flock of birds fly through the stadium now. Gary Bradshaw thought the Steelers would be ready before the game, and he was so right. And now the game clock winds down and winds out, and the Steelers have their first win of 1981, and the good chance is going to be the first of many. We'll be back in Three River Stadium after this. at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Steelers open up with their first win of the 1981 season, coming in the third game of the season, but a most impressive victory it was, a 38-10 win over the New York Jets as the Steelers opened up on offense every dimension. Bradshaw throwing the ball exceptionally well. All his runners got big yardage. The offensive line was excellent. We'll be going to NFL 81, an update on all the scores and stories right after these messages. 